This lesson deals with lab number six, which is entitled negative resistance. Many semiconductor devices exhibit a phenomenon called negative resistance. This is a region of their voltage current plot that has a slope that becomes negative. We can create this effect with an op-amp, and when you have this type of an element, there's some very interesting things you can do. The concepts we're going to cover are linear and saturated operation of an op-amp, A-stable oscillators, and LC sinusoidal oscillators. As far as the laboratory techniques, we're going to take a look at displaying the VI characteristics using the XY feature of our digital end discovery. Now for this particular lab, I didn't do a separate set of lecture notes because there's a lot of new ideas that we didn't express in ECE 201 or 202 with respect to op-amps. So I decided to type this up so we can have another source to read besides the video itself. The first negative resistor we're going to make is what's called a current controlled negative resistance, and I'll explain that in a little bit. The circuit's on the following page, and so let's do some of this algebra right on the circuit. Here I've got a circuit that looks like a non-inverting amplifier, but the polarity sign is flipped on the op amp. I also have another feedback path this way. Let's assume that this circuit's stable. Feedback is going to drive the voltage across here to be zero. Apply a voltage here, current I is going to flow, and that current's all going to flow up into this resistor, and the value of it's going to be this node voltage, which is V minus this node voltage, which I'll call V out, divided by R. If there's zero volts here and there's V volts here, then there's V volts here. And this is equal to a voltage divider, current's going like this, of V out with R1 over R1 plus R2. But that's the formula we use to derive the non-inverting amplifier. The equations are up on the previous page. Go back now and substitute that in over here. I have V minus 1 times V, so those cancel, and I get a minus V times R2 over R1 divided by R. And that's the expression here, or equation number 3. Now if I take this equation and solve for the ratio of V to I, I'll bring the I over on this side of the equation and then bring the minus R over here times R1 divided by R2. And this is at the top of page 2. So my formula for the ratio of V to I is a minus R1 over R2 times R. Now if I pick R1 to equal R2, then the input resistance looking into this circuit is the negative of this feedback resistor. So I can take any resistor and turn it into a negative value. What this means is that if you put a positive voltage across here, current comes out of the equivalent circuit terminal to get that power from the power supply of the op amp. Okay, now if I begin to increase the voltage here, eventually the output will reach the power supply value, and actually a little bit less than that, it'll stop changing. So we had an ECE 201. In chapter 4 on pages 25 and 26, we talked about what happens when an op amp saturates. The output voltage just stays constant. This is no better than the positive power supply if it were to saturate positive, but usually we lose a volt or a volt and a half or so. We're going to measure this in lab. So as I increase this voltage, eventually we're going to have the output stop changing. Now when that occurs, what happens? Well, the current I that's coming in here is still the current in this resistor because they have a very high resistance for the op amp. That's still true, but the voltage across the op amp will no longer be zero. We've got this node voltage minus this node voltage divided by R. And that's the expression down over here. I've got a linear result and another linear result. Where do those two cross over? That's when they both have the same value. All right, so let's evaluate this equation and set it equal to our previous one. So when R1 equals R2, V out is equal to two times whatever V is equal to. And so our transition point would be setting those two results equal to each other. So the voltage V then would be V out over two. But when this occurs, we're at the edge of where the saturation model is true and our, and our non-saturated model is true. So that would be the V is equal to V out over two, which is V sat over two. Likewise, the current here, if V is equal to V sat over two, and then we've got minus V sat positive, we wind up having that as a minus V sat over two divided by R. Now this is the equation of a straight line. And this is the equation of a straight line. So let's sketch those on one graph. And this is shown at the bottom of the next page. So here's our current controlled negative resistor where we're at the transition point where this saturates and the voltage cross here is half the value here because the current in these two resistors is the same and we have no current coming out of the op amp whether it's saturated or not. And the voltage cross here is zero if it's in its linear region and not saturated, and then it's going to be non-zero if we saturate it. We have two straight line equations. One, we have V is equal to minus I times R, and that's a plot of the line right over here. Then our second equation when we saturate is that I is equal to V minus V sat over R. So that's the equation of a straight line, which has two intercepts. When I is equal to zero, that's along this line, then V is equal to V sat positive. That's equation number five that we're referring to. The other intercept is when the voltage V is equal to zero, then I is equal to minus V sat positive over R. So that's the equation of a straight line. If we're applying a voltage across here, start out here, and we can follow this curve. But when we get to this point, do we go this way or this way, or can we do both? Let's see if we can figure it out. So I apply a voltage V here, and eventually this saturates. So we're sitting right at this particular point here. Now suppose that I increase this voltage, and I want to stay on this saturated line. 
If I go this way, or do I go this way? If I increase this voltage, and this is saturated, half is here, then this will have to increase. But that means that the opposite sign of it's gonna decrease. And if this voltage decreases, then we're gonna come back out of the saturation state and go back into the linear state. So that doesn't happen. In other words, we don't go on this part of the line as we increase V. Now suppose that V decreases. If that decreases and this stays the same, then this has to decrease, which means the opposite sign must increase, which makes this more positive, which keeps this thing saturated. We're gonna follow the line along in this direction. So we started out here, along this line, we're come here, and then we're not gonna go this way, we're gonna go this way. So that's the case where we saturate positively. Now suppose that you saturate negatively. We can repeat the same argument again. Well, I'll see if you can derive this on your own, but to show that in this saturated state, that when the output goes to a negative voltage, that V is equal to minus V set over two at the transition point, and I is equal to V set over two R. And I've labeled this on the following page on top. But follow the same derivation technique and see if you can come up with the same results I've got here. The curve we had before, my transition point now is at minus V set minus over two. Now V set minus is a positive number. In other words, if we saturate at minus say 10 volts, with maybe 11 or 12 volts apply, then the term we call V set minus is a positive number. We'll put the minus sign also with that. So the saturation voltage positively and negatively are both positive numbers. Put a sign with the negative one, but they're not always the same value because the transistors inside the op amp have different clipping voltages and that'll cause slight differences between the two. And we're actually gonna measure those in the experiment. And then the other transition point here is at V set minus over R. And this will be a positive number becomes negative, we put the minus sign in front of it. So if the output saturated negatively at minus 10 volts, then V set minus will be a plus 10 volts. This is my VI characteristics. So the current controls what value of voltage you have. So if you put a current source here, you only get one value of voltage. Now in terms of the voltage, you can have multiple operating points. We're gonna talk about that in the next section. But so suppose we put a capacitor across our negative resistor circuit. When it's in its linear operating range, this looks like a minus R. Let me blow this up so we can take a closer look at it and kind of argue what's gonna happen as a function of time. Suppose we start out at the origin here when we first turn the power on. So we see a negative resistance. So this capacitor sees a negative resistance. So the exponential behavior of this circuit is quite different than when we just have a positive resistor here. We have an exponential term that's e to the minus t over tau, but now tau has got a negative sign to it. So we get an e to the plus t over tau. So we're gonna see an exponential running away initially if we start at this point. We can do that with just some noise or perhaps some a little bit of initial condition by turning the power on. So we can go either in this direction or we can go in this direction. Let's just assume we go this way and then we could repeat the same argument if we went this way. So you get to this point and can you just sit here? Well, you have a current in the capacitor and you have a voltage across it. In steady state, the capacitor is an open circuit so it can't just sit here because it's gotta have zero current. So does the capacitor go this way or does it jump down here and go this way? Well, if it goes this way, then I have an increase in voltage and I have an increase in current. But with our definition of I for this particular problem, I have minus C times dV dt, or the change in voltage over the change in time. So if we were to go this way, we need to decrease the current, not increase it. So it can't go this way. What it does actually is jump from here to here because the voltage across the capacitor can't change instantaneously, but the current can. Instead of going out of the capacitor, it then goes into the capacitor. Now, what's the equivalent circuit here? Well, it's just simply a battery and a resistor. So we have an RC charging circuit. So the capacitor's voltage begins to change, actually begins to increase until we get to this point. Now, again, can we go back this way or do we have to go this way? Well, if we go back this way, again, we have the problem with our capacitor seeing a negative resistance and it wants to become unstable and run away. And so we get back to this point again. But again, we can't sit here because I've got a DC voltage and a current through the capacitor. And in steady state, I've got to have an open circuit. So my only choice is to jump to here. Now again, what I see is an RC circuit we're actually saturated negatively and the capacitor begins to change its voltage. We start out here, go up to here, jump down to here, we're positively saturated, jump up to here, we're negatively saturated. I kind of repeat that process. That's gonna create a square wave at the output of the op amp. What's at the bottom of the next page is deriving some of the formulas for this circuit. Before we go on to derive the equation, let's do one more thing. Let's make a rough sketch of the Output voltage and the voltage across the capacitor and the current coming out of the capacitor. Let's assume we start over here. So at this point, we're saturated positively and we have a equivalent, the seen from the capacitor, of a resistor and a battery of Vsat plus. So we have an RC charging circuit. As you can see here, we're gonna start out at a negative voltage and eventually go to a positive voltage. Now, with an RC charging circuit, you're trying to charge towards that DC battery, which is Vsat positive, but we're gonna stop here at Vsat positive over two because we have to take a jump. 
We're going to RC charge from this point to this point, and the current is going to do a similar thing. We're going to start at a negative value and be less negative. And when we jump, the current will then decrease and get to this point, and the voltage will likewise decrease, so we'll get an RC decay. We can have a linear circuit here, just that we had here, just that our battery is negative. Here we'll be shooting towards minus V set minus, but we're going to stop at half that value. Here's a picture of what those wave shapes would look like. We start out at minus V set minus over 2 and then charge towards the battery. And we stop at that transition point. Current starts out negative, is less negative, and the output saturated positively. And then we start to RC decay from this positive value to this negative value, trying to shoot into the negative power supply. We don't make it because of the curve. And the current starts out more positive and then less positive. While all this is going on, we saturate it negatively. So let's look at those equations. We have the voltage V is equal to the voltage across the capacitor, which is a solution of a first order differential equation. So that's some A plus B times E to the minus T over tau, where tau is R times C. Now we have an initial condition of minus V set minus over 2, and that would be this equation evaluated at T equals 0, so that's A plus B. Now if T approaches infinity, the term B is multiplied by a very small number, so we just have A. And what we're shooting for is the positive saturation voltage. Now I have two equations and two unknowns, and I can solve for V as a function of time. I get A plus B times E to the minus T over tau. Now let's evaluate that equation at T equals T1. That was the value of V set plus over 2. And now I could solve this equation for T1. A little bit of algebra I didn't show here. I'm taking the natural log of both sides of the equation eventually to get T1 is R times C. as a natural log of 2 plus the quantity of V set minus over V set plus. Now this is the value of half my period. Well, now let's try to solve for the other half. But before we do that, let's take a look at those waveforms one more time. So we just derived the equation for this part of the waveform, and now we're going to, let's shift our reference point to here and call that our new t equals zero. Starting out at v set plus over two, and then we're exponentially decaying towards the negative power supply, but we're not going to make it because we're going to have to jump on our curve at minus v set minus over two. The way all this is going on, the output's saturated negatively. I guess we're going to use those to get our equations. Get the second part of our half period. V of zero now is some a plus b times e to the minus t over tau. And then when t is equal to zero, we just get e to the zero, which is one. And that's equal to our initial condition of v set plus over two. As t approaches infinity, we then are equal to a plus b times e to the minus infinity, but that term is zero, so we just have a, and that's going to be approaching minus v set minus. Now we can solve this for some v of t and get this expression with a and b, and then evaluate it at t equals t2, which we know has a value of minus v set minus over two. Then we can manipulate this equation, taking the natural log of both sides, and solve for t2. and get this expression. So now if I take the previous result and this one and add them together, get the overall period. Now when you add two natural logs, that's the same as multiplying them together. When I multiply this out, I get a 2 times 2, which is 4. And then when I multiply this term times this, I get another 1. And I get the inner product times 2. So this is my equation for the period of that square wave. The reciprocal of that is the frequency of the square wave. We're going to verify whether that comes out with our measurements of the saturation voltages and the R's and C's that we have. Now suppose that we take our current control negative resistance and put a capacitor and an inductor in series across it. This is shown on the next page. In ECE201, we talked about a real inductor as having ideal inductance and then some series resistance because of the wires associated with making the coil. For a capacitor, we model it as a parallel resistance, but you also model it as a series resistance for the dielectric losses. So we got these two resistors in series, and if looking into this circuit, we have a negative value of R, and if that value of minus R is equal to these two, then we have no resistance in the circuit, just simply a pure L and C. Now towards the end of ECE 201 in chapter seven, we looked at a response of an RLC circuit, and the underdam case had a lot of overshoot and ringing. And that exponential decay was a function of the total resistance, but that's gone now. We just have a pure sine wave term. And the value of the frequency would be one over two pi LC from our calculations in chapter seven of ECE 201. We're gonna do that. We're gonna hook this up in our lab and just see that we're able to create a sine wave out of just a battery and an op amp. And the last circuit we're going to take a look at is a voltage-controlled negative resistance. And it's the same circuit we did before, but we're going to put the plus sign here and the minus sign here. So could you go back and repeat the derivations and generate the VI characteristics and show that they actually look like this, the letter N. What I have here is the voltage gives me a unique value of current. So we call it a voltage-controlled negative resistance. And this has some interesting properties, too, with respect to the loads that you can put out here. We're going to investigate that by taking measurements in lab. And this is lab number six, negative resistance.